Hey everyone, uh, my name is Eric Buckles and I just wanted to make a quick demonstration video to show off my music system I designed and implemented using Quartz and Metasounds for this year's Epic Mega Jam, which started last Thursday and wraps up tomorrow. My team is still a fair amount of work away from having a playable level, uh, but I did make this handy little test level uh, to play around with, uh, make sure my music system is all ready to go. The theme for this year's Mega Jam is As Above, So Below. And our team went with the direction of having a third person shooter where players can shift from the regular above world down to the mysterious below world, where everything's exactly the same as the above world, except now players can move around without enemies being able to see them and that sort of thing. I'll show you my blueprints and meta sounds in a minute, but I just want to do a very quick demonstration. Um, here I've got three different music states that can be triggered. The Explore is a musical ambience that's procedurally generated by Metasounds. And I can go to the Below World by pressing Z, which gives us some similar ambience, but now it's going through a bunch of filters. And uh, the same similar types of filters are being used for these other cues as well. Uh, threat is like kind of a preset sort of drum loop that's also randomly generated. And when I trigger combat, it'll finish the loop and fade in an extra synth layer, so it'll kind of ramp up. And depending on when the cue gets triggered, the transition can be a bit sudden, but that's the general idea. The combat cue also has an intensity parameter that goes up depending on the number of enemies that are targeting the player. And this is just a really simple crossfade. So yeah, let's jump into the meta sounds. First we'll look at the ambient explore music. This was my first time generating musical ambience in Metasounds, so I wanted to keep the approach pretty straightforward. At the top here I've just got a bass drum loop that plays over and over just to have some sort of pulse. Uh, and on the right here are the effects that are applied when the player is in the below world. I'm not too savvy on getting the most out of these effects, but um, I, th I think it worked out. Uh, then I've got a, a bass layer. Um, I, for this, I just have two wave players that are set up to alternate between each other. So sometimes there can be a little bit of overlapping between the release tails. And um, I have an array here that of all these different assets that I can choose from. And then I'm actually applying some random pitch shift uh, just to get a few different notes for variation. Uh, I found out later that I also needed to adjust the loop time for the pitch bend since playing a file an octave higher means now it's only half the length of the original duration. And so uh, this right here is how I got the loop to re-trigger uh, while compensating for the pitch shift. Um, just, that's just more effects for the below world. Um, for this layer, I have a bunch of short stingers that I didn't want to play very often. And uh, so I've set up a random delay that'll wait a certain amount of time before it plays and then re-triggers again. Um, the strings. So this is just more of the same as above, uh, just a few minor differences. Um, same with the below world strings, with the pitch bending. And that's pretty much it for, for Explore. The threat loop is even simpler. Uh, I'm selecting uh, two random drum layers and matching them with the bass layer, bass synth, and then I've got a random synth bell array. Um, I'm applying the same same effects to the below world, and that's here, here's what it sounds like with the drums. And then when combat is triggered, uh, this layer fades in, which is the random synth bell and that bass. And so you, in game you'll only hear one or two bars of this, or with, with the synth layer at least, but the, the drums will always play in, until combat's engaged. Uh, combat music is just one big loop with three horizontal layers that fade as the intensity goes up. Uh, at the start here I've got, um, I've got it set up so that it can start either from the very beginning or it can start halfway through. And that's just to make it so it's not always starting from the same spot every time. Um, this mess down here is just all the effects for the below world. And then up here is where the combat intensity gets brought in. 
we'll start it down with zero. So we started halfway through the track. And now as I bring in the intensity, we get some extra layers. And then if we want to go to the below world, we can cross fade them here. And we just get some high pass filters, uh, flanger, that sort of thing. And lastly, I have the combat end stinger. Uh, which just chooses one of three different endings and each of those has three layers uh, to go with the same uh, intensity la layers that um, as the combat cue. So if I play another one yeah just choose it at random. There's three different lengths, one short, one medium, one long. Um, so yeah now, now let's uh, jump into the blueprints. I don't want to go through everything because I want to keep this as short as I can, but if you're really interested in seeing how I built something like this, I'd be more than happy to send you my project, and then you can dig as deep as you like. Uh, so either just send me a DM on Twitter or you can find my email on my website. Okay, so everything in this blueprint can be controlled using these three functions. There's set music activity state, which tells the system which piece of music should be playing. Then there's the set music location state, which tells meta sounds which mix to use, either the regular above world mix or the, the below world mix with all the filter effects. And the last function is the set combat intensity, which as we just went over, uh, fades in the extra layers during combat. Uh, so here's an overview. Um, on the left, I've got most of the logic and main functions. And on the right is mostly like the courts and keeping track of which stuff is playing or cued. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's start here. So we'll start with the set music activity state. Uh, if an event comes in and is changing the activity state, then first we're going to check if the music is already playing or not. If nothing is playing, then it's just going to simply start playing the corresponding piece of music. But now let's say we have an activity state change and there's already something playing. First we need to cancel any play quantize events that have already been scheduled if they're no longer valid. And uh, so that's why, that's why I'm keeping track of which pieces of music are queued so that I can go back and cancel them if I need to. And to cancel a play quantized event uh, that you've already scheduled on Quartz, you just apply the stop function to the audio component. Uh, that part took me quite some time to figure out back when I was uh, working on other projects. And so I just wanted to share that in case anyone else wasn't sure how to cancel pending events. All right, so we've gotten rid of uh, any unnecessary cues. And now we need to look at what our new activity state is. And depending on what that is and what the previous state was, we can build out the logic. If we're switching to the none state where there's no music, then we simply fade out the music and then stop the clock. If we're switching to explore from combat, then we just play our little ending stinger and then the explore music will start afterwards. If we're switching to explore from threat, It'll fade out the threat music and start explore. Uh, if we're going to threat and combat is playing, then we're going to use the same quartz clock as the combat music and schedule a play quantize on the next bar. And very simple. If we're switching to threat music and combat is not playing, that means that explore is playing. And so what I have here is I, I duck down the volume of explore and then I start the threat loop. That way I get a little bit of the explore music going on while the drums are playing. Um, and then when we switch to combat and the threat loop is already playing, then I use the same quartz clock as the threat loop. And then I schedule it to come in on the next two bar interval. And at the same time that I schedule it, I, I fade in the synth layer of the pre-sync so that we get that ramp up into the content or combat, sorry. Uh, lastly, if we're switching to combat and the threat loop for whatever reason isn't already playing, uh, then we just fade out the explore music and then the combat music starts. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give a huge shout out and thanks to Dan Reynolds and Aaron McLaren from Epic uh, for all the education on Metasounds and Quartz they've been putting out. Um, and again, if you want to get your hands on my project and play around with it, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, meta sounds are awesome. Uh, I'd love to see what else other people are making with them. And let's talk about meta sounds. 
Uh, see you all later.